Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Proto, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to get crystal clear, vibrant footage in Sony Vegas. Now, in this first episode of the Sony Vegas editing series, I am going to be taking you through how to color create your footage because, well, I've had a lot of requests to do that first, and I assume people already know how to edit. Next week's video will be an updated render settings video, but if you're not familiar with Vegas, don't worry, you're not going to get shafted or felt left out. As by the end of the series, I will have taken you through a step by step guide on learning Vegas, and you'll be up and running in no time. Now this is an updated version of my last color correction video I done ages ago and a lot of things have changed so let's get into it. So throughout the video you'll probably hear me say CC a lot and all that stands for is color correction but anyway for my video I have three different color correction presets. I have one for my gameplay which I use for all my games being COD, Battlefield and the rest. I also have one for my desktop so when I do desktop tutorials like the one you're going to be seeing now and lastly I have one for real life footage that are done through like a camera so for my unboxings and stuff like that. Or if you do face cam, this will apply as well. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that when you have Vegas open, the first thing you've done is disabled resample. If you haven't already done that. Now what it does is it gets rid of that interpolated frames that Vegas creates. I'll get more into it in another time, but do that first. Then besides the footage, click on the furthest icon to the right of the clip. Hover over it and it should say event effects. Yeah, click on that. But once the window's open, you want to add color correct to secondary, color corrector, color curves and sharpen. Click add and OK. Anyway, starting with color corrector secondary, you want to keep hue at zero because otherwise the color shifts, so it look really weird, and set saturation to 1.164. This is really specific, but you don't have to be precise when you're doing it. Now what this does is it makes your video look so much more vibrant, but it doesn't overdo it like in my last video. Now leave gamma at 1 and set the gain parameter to 1.164. This makes the image a little more bright and seems to affect more of the highlights. Now set offset to minus 18.63 and this darkens the lower end a little bit more. The combination of gain and offset act very similar to the way brightness and contrast act. For the rest, we just want to leave that at default, but if for some reason it's different to yours, then change it just to match. I just want to say that these numbers are very specific, as I said earlier, but it really doesn't matter too much how accurate you are. You just want to get sort of the rough number, and these are the things that work for me, but you can change them if you don't like them. And now we move on to the second tab, which is just a basic color corrector. Now for the most part, I don't think that copying these points will work, but you want to push the lows to the more yellowy red area, so orange, and the mids a little bit more so. Now for the highs, you want to move the marker the tiniest bit to the blue. Now what you've basically done in layman's terms is, well, your footage is comprised of three things, lows, mids, and highs. Your lows are your darker areas of the picture, mids are your middle ground, and highs are the brighter areas in your picture. For example, a light sky will be affected by changing the highs parameter, whereas your shadows will be affected by the lows. I think you get the point anyway, but with these settings, make your lows and mids warmer and the highs a bit colder, so to speak. It makes the images look a little bit better overall, but it's more of a stylistic choice. Now for color curves, you really want to make a faint S curve by dragging up the top bit and dragging down the bottom one. In this case, it makes the lights lighter and the darks darker, but depending on your situation, it'll really add a lot more depth to your footage. Just for reference so you know what it does, on the left you have channel and so RGB stands for red, green, blue basically the lightness of your entire footage and if you put it on red you're basically just going to be affecting the red channel same with blue if you set it on blue and green if you set it on green as for what they mean at the very left you have your lows in the middle you have your mids and at the right you'll have your highs dragging it up makes the overall picture brighter whereas dragging it down makes it darker that's why you start with the linear curve the left are the darks in the darkest area and at the right you have the highs where they're at the top now you should be able to experiment around with these, but the S-curve is the one used in most productions, which is the one I showed you. And lastly, we have Sharpen. Now Sharpen adds more of a punch to your image and makes it stand out better. You don't want to set the value too high or else everything will look really grainy and crap. Again, I found that in my last CC video, the Sharpen was too high, and now I use 0.005. This is really all you need. Okay, so now that I've shown you the parameters, now what? Well, I'm going to be showing you the ones which work best, and how to make filter packages which keep all the effects and settings in one neat little file. So you can just click on it and loads of your effects and settings will be done. This will save you a lot of time from having to re-enter them in again. I just want to quickly point out that you can disable the effect by either clicking on the remove button or by unchecking the tick. So for the most general type, which is gameplay, the one you're all waiting for, you basically want to enable everything besides color curves because otherwise it'll make the gameplay look too dark. So just uncheck that and you're good to go. For your desktop, you want to disable color corrector and color curves, and I tend to find this gives a nice result. And lastly, for real life captured footage, which you use through a camera and stuff like that, you just want to disable color corrector and enable everything else. 
It makes your face and other things less towards the orange side of life. Anyway, to save it as a preset, you want to make sure that you've enabled the ones you want. Click on the video fix icon and then click on save as on the far right. Now enter a name so you know when to use it. For me, for example, it's going to be gameplay and click OK. The next time you want to add the effect, just click on event effects as usual, plug in chain and then click on filter packages. From there, just click on the one and press add and OK. Anyway, if you follow these steps, you can achieve some really nice results. The difference is on screen now. So I hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the first episode of Starting Sony Vegas and next week I'm going to be taking a look at my render settings before we get into the noobs guide. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you all have enjoyed and if you did, why not give it a like and tell me how they work for you. Thanks everyone, this has been Proto, adios!